Hello, and welcome to a movie on how to make good movies. There are three components necessary for a good production. Scripting, shooting, and editing. Let's begin by talking about the types of films. There's drama, comedy, documentary, instructional, artistic, and animated. Here are some examples of each of these types of films. in their native mode, get out. Our school bell is a party that is sounded to begin each class period. We have an assembly every Monday morning. The principal always has words of encouragement for us. Statistics is an excellent tool for making decisions in the face of uncertainty. And boating and wildlife are two diverse yet interconnected areas where these decision-making tools and skills can be used. We are usually forced to make choices but based on samples from the population or process we are concerned about. So the samples we take are vitally important to these decisions. Where does the story come from? Think about it. And here are a few ideas to catalyze that thought. Oftentimes, books are put into motion pictures. And then there are original stories made up by the artists. And there are legends that are put into a motion picture. Where is your story coming from? And where did this instructional video story come from? Now that we have the source of the story, what do we do next? The next thing we do is get a group together and come up with a whole bunch of great ideas called brainstorming. Then we combine the common ideas into an outline. From that we build a storyboard and from the storyboard we can document scenes and shots into a formal script. Now that we have a script, we set out to do the filming. But this is what most amateurs do in the first place without a script. There are three basic camera setups. Long shot, like this one, that establishes the location and the scene. Medium shot, shows more detail. Close up like this that shows even more detail. Now, besides these three basic shots, which make up the language of film, there are some special shots that, when used sparingly, can add to the flow or the excitement of the movie. Modern camcorders have become smaller and more portable, and with image stabilization, it is possible to actually move the camera without the body shake that often accompanies this kind of motion. Using the moving camera, we can sometimes create a dynamic opening by moving from a detail in a close-up 
to a scene establisher of a long shot. You don't want to do this very often, maybe once in an entire movie. The reverse of the close-up to long shot is the long shot to close-up. This is often needed when the action is so continuous you can't call cut because it would upset the subject. Documentary films will often use this moving camera technique as well as the next two types of shots, the tracking and the panning shot. Tracking is quite difficult to do well. Oftentimes the object you are tracking gets ahead or behind your tracking. Panning is also quite difficult to do, especially if you are trying to do it without a tripod assist. Tracking and panning are used extensively in sports films and in documentary films. With small, lightweight cameras, we can be tempted to overdo these moving camera techniques. Consider a balance between the basic static shots and these moving camera techniques. Remember, too much of a good thing can be harmful. Good lighting makes a movie look more professional. For this studio shot, we're using what is called three-point lighting. This type of lighting gives an even coverage and is used in TV news broadcasts or instructional films like this where there is a talking head at center stage. There is one key or main light directly in front of the talent, that's the person being filmed, then a fill light that eliminates the shadows cast by the key light, and an overhead backlight that separates the subject from the background. Here's an illustration of what each light does for the subject in a schematic diagram. When we use only one light, from above or below, the effect can be quite dramatic. And it can create a mood like this one, which is pretty scary. Natural lighting can be a problem when the sun is very strong and directional. For static subjects, a fill-in reflector can be used to help somewhat, but you need extra help to hold the reflector from blowing away. By the way, wind can play havoc with sound recording. Some cameras have wind rejection circuitry, but it's best to record sound using a microphone like we are doing here. We have seen that there are three major elements of filmmaking. Scripting, shooting, and editing. We have looked at both scripting and shooting. There are, of course, many variations on our simple introductory ideas. We will look at editing, which is more a computer-intensive activity in another program. For now, if we can get the story into a script and shoot the pieces of that story, the editing is merely an exercise in putting these pieces together. If you get the script right, the shooting will flow. Get the shots right, and the editing will flow. Each element depends upon the previous element. If you think about it, Making a movie is like preparing a meal, sewing a garment, or building a house. Each of these needs a plan, a recipe for the meal, a pattern for the garment, and a set of plans for the house. The recipe, pattern, or plan is the script in the movie. The shooting of the movie is like the harvesting of the vegetables for the meal, the choosing of the fabric for the garment, and the assembly of the lumber, nails, paint, and other building materials for the house. Editing the movie is like the cooking of the meal as we combine the ingredients. When we make the garment, we sew or edit the fabric. Building the house is the editing of the lumber, nails, paint, and other building materials 
to form the final structure. So, if you have ever cooked a meal, sewn a garment, or built a structure, you have gone through the same type of activity as making a movie. Keep this in mind, and just don't wave the movie camera around in an unplanned way.